Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ, and today I wanna to talk about crankbaits. And not only that, I wanna talk about five big mistakes that a lot of anglers make with crankbaits, so stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. As always, this video is brought to you by the Bass Hat. It comes in a lot of different colors, comes with a really unique wooden bass patch on the top. If you guys wanna help me bring more videos like this to you guys, click the link below and pick up a bass hat. Not only are you gonna be looking awesome, but you're gonna really help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. So let's talk about crankbaits. There are so many different crankbaits on the market. You have crankbaits that dive literally less than a foot of water, and you have crankbaits that dive all the way down to 25 foot of water. And you can even do certain techniques to actually get your crankbaits to dive to 30 and 40 foot of water, but that's a different video for a different day. Another great thing about a crankbait is that it really can mimic a lot of different bait fish and little critters that bass love to eat in the water. So you can really mimic a shad very well. You can make it look like a bluegill and you can also make it look like a crawfish. And those are three of the main forage species that a lot of bass are going to eat. Crankbaits also work well in a variety of different situations in water colors. You can catch bass on crankbaits in really clear water, in stained water, and even really, really muddy water. So with that being said, I think there's five big mistakes that a lot of guys make with crankbaits. So let's talk about those right now. So the first mistake that a lot of anglers make with a crankbait is they fish it the exact same way, no matter the cover options that they are fishing it around. So maybe they go to one lake and there's a lot of grass, they're fishing it the same way. They go to another lake, there's a lot of wood and they just fish it the exact same way. They kind of get stuck in a rut of fishing a crankbait the exact same way. And if you think about it, we really have three different cover options that we like to fish crankbaits around. One is hard bottom. So a hard bottom could be rock, it could be a shell bed, it could be a clay bottom. Another form of cover is wood. And the last form of cover is grass. So in those situations, you kind of have to fish a crankbait a little bit differently. So let's go over quickly how to fish a crankbait in each of those situations. So the first situation is hard bottom. If you're fishing it around rock bottom, clay bottoms, shell beds, we know as crankbait fishermen that we like to get that bait to hit in the bottom, to hit into the hard bottom. But the thing that will help you to get a few more fish to bite is to not have that bait absolutely digging into the bottom extremely hard. Maybe you're fishing a hump that has rock on top, it's 10 foot on top. So you think, oh, I'm gonna fish a crankbait that dives a 15 foot, that way I can hit that crankbait across the bottom. Now, while that might be the right crankbait, the important thing is, is you don't wanna be absolutely plowing the bottom. What's really best and what's really help you to get a few more bites is really if you kind of just graze the bottom. What I really like to do is hit the bottom, let that crankbait kind of ride up, hit the bottom, let it kind of ride up, hit the bottom. So I'm burying the retrieve. What I like to do a lot is sweep the rod when I'm fishing hard bottom. I'll let that bait hit the bottom, I'll pause it, let it rise up and keep on going. So it actually helps the bass to get that bait a little bit better. If you think about it, if a crankbait is absolutely digging on the bottom, they have to come from above and pin it against the bottom. And if they're hitting the top of a crankbait, they're not gonna get the hooks that well. But if it hits off of a rod, and kind of pauses and pops up and then they hit it, they're gonna get that bait a lot better. Now, when it comes to fishing it around wood, what I really like to do with wood is feather my crankbait. I really like to throw it into the wood cover. I said this in a recent video, but if you're kind of afraid to get a crankbait into a lay down or into heavy cover, you're probably not gonna get as many bites as if you're really willing to put it up there and put it where the fish are. But in that situation, you don't always wanna just reel that crankbait really fast. So if I'm bringing it over a deep brush pile, I'm really gonna kind of feather that crankbait through, which means I'm not always going with a lot of speed in this situation. Situation. I'm really kind of feeling out exactly what my crankbait is doing while it's in that wood. If it comes up to a branch, I'm gonna slow that crankbait down a little bit, allow it to pop over that branch without getting hung. So when it comes to fishing a crankbait in grass, speed is really your friend. I like to fish a crankbait when I'm fishing around grass pretty fast. A lot of times that speed is gonna be what causes a reaction strike from a fish. Now there are certain times of the year, maybe when that water is really cold where I don't always 
always use a lot of speed. The other thing that I am purposefully doing when I'm fishing a crankbait in grass is I'm getting that bait hung up in the grass and trying to rip it and pop it free. No matter if that grass is in 15 foot of water or if it's in four or five foot of water, I wanna take the top of that grass, let it get hung, snatch it out, and that's when you're gonna cause a reaction strike from a bass. Mistake number two when it comes to fishing a crankbait, never just cast out a crankbait and reel it straight back in, okay? That is rarely going to get the number of bites as if you vary the retrieve. Now, I believe that this is true for just about every lure that you fish. Years ago, when I was fishing on Lake Chickamauga, a guy pulled up next to me on a ledge and he was throwing a crankbait and it looked like he was constantly setting the hook with the crankbait. He was literally reeling it as fast as he could, sweeping the rod, and pausing it, reeling as fast as he could, sweeping the rod and pausing it. And he was catching probably five times as many fish as I was because I was out there just doing kind of a slower sweeping technique and letting it pause. That really aggressive style of fishing that bait was causing a reaction strike that I wasn't getting by simply pausing it from time to time and slowly sweeping the rod. So never just cast it out and reel it straight in. Try to snap your rod from time, pause it from time, sweep the rod, impart a little bit of action to that crankbait to get that reaction strike. Mistake number three when it comes to fishing a crankbait is not realizing how much control you have over the depth of that crankbait. We all see the package and it says it dives from 10 to 12 foot deep and you think that it's just going to dive 10 to 12 foot deep. This isn't always the case. Now there's three big things that affect the lure depth of your crankbait. One is the line size. If you're fishing a crankbait on 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon line, that crankbait is not gonna dive as deep as if it is on 10 pound test or 12 pound test. Another thing that affects the depth of that crankbait is simply where you're positioning your rod. If you're cranking a rod and keeping your rod tip high, that crankbait is probably gonna dive about three or four foot less than if you actually stick that rod down closer to the water. So that can help you sometimes if you're fishing it around grass, you wanna keep it above the grass, keep that rod tip high, or maybe you're really plowing that bottom like we talked about earlier, raise your rod tip so that that crankbait isn't hitting the bottom constantly, but just kind of ticking it across across the bottom. Now the third thing that affects the depth of our crankbait is actually the distance of your cast. The further out that you cast, the deeper that crankbait is going to dive. So maybe you wanna get a really little crankbait to dive really deep, then make as far of a cast as you can. Or maybe you don't want a crankbait to get so deep, you can make a lot shorter casts and that crankbait is not gonna to run to its maximum depth. Mistake number four when it comes to fishing a crankbait is not knowing when to fish a crankbait that has a lot of rattles and when you fish a crankbait that is silent. Now I really like to keep this pretty simple and this has changed a lot for me over the years. I feel like bass have kind of gotten more conditioned to crankbaits and different sounds that crankbaits make so I really fish silent crankbaits a lot more than I fish ones with rattles in them. Now there are three different situations that I like to use a crankbait that has rattles in it. Now the first one is anytime I'm fishing very muddy water. If I'm fishing muddy water Water, maybe I'm fishing a square bill. I like to use those rattles. I like to have that extra vibration to help that bass hone in on that bait. The other time that I like to use rattles is if I'm fishing around extremely aggressive fish. You don't always know the behavior of a bass, but sometimes you just kind of get into those situations where those fish are absolutely plowing your bait, whatever it is that you're fishing. They just seem aggressive to you in the water. Maybe you're catching a lot of fish. That's when I'll switch over to the rattles. So the third time that I really like to fish crankbaits with rattles is typically during the pre-spawn. So before the fish actually get up on beds, it seems like during that pre-spawn time frame, it really seems like bass just love vibration they love rattles. So I like to fish baits that have rattles during the pre-spawn. Now I've got one more tip for you guys, but real quick, since we're kind of talking about equipment with rattles, I just want you guys to know that it's extremely important to change out the hooks on just about every crankbait that you own. The stock hooks from almost every major company out there pretty much are trash. So what I like to do is switch out those hooks. There's two different style hooks that I like. 
I like a Berkley Fusion round bin hook, and then I like the Mustad KVD triple grip hook. If the fish are really hitting a crankbait hard, I typically switch to that KVD hook. If they're not hitting it that hard, then I'm gonna fish that round bend hook. All right, guys, the fifth mistake that a lot of anglers make when it comes to fishing a crankbait is not realizing when to put the crankbait down. A crankbait is a phenomenal search tool, but sometimes it is not the best lure to use for the situation that you're fishing. A lot of times though, I love to find fish using a crankbait, but once I find those fish, a lot of times I'm going to switch over to maybe a slower presentation. Sometimes I'm fishing big schools offshore and the first couple of fish will usually hit a crankbait, but after that, it seems like those fish kind of get conditioned to that bait. So then I might actually put the crankbait down and pick up a Carolina rig or a big worm. So guys, if you wanna know a little bit more about my process of finding fish, you can actually click on this video right here I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.